Hello and welcome to Gamers Ledge Podcast. My name is Mark. I'm one of your hosts. Uh, come on in, sit down, relax, have yourself a fine beverage of your choice. It's a conversation amongst friends, a look at what it means to be a hardcore gamer, and of course, a look at the week's industry news. Uh, joining me tonight, uh, all the way on the far left side of the bottom of your screen, it's Kate. And then next to Kate is, of course, Matt. And suddenly I can't hear Matt. Can you hear him? No, maybe he muted himself for the opening credits. I did mute myself for the opening credits, yes. Howdy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. So we have a ton... Let him in. Oh. Um, I can let him in. Uh, he, he, you know, he says, how many times do I need to click this button? But the problem is, is that uh, I don't see the notification for it. How do I... Okay, I can do it this way, I think. Invite Rarebit Debak. Invite sent. I don't see it. I know, that's why I said there needs to be something on here. It's just like invites. Oh, Dave wants to join your room. I see it. Okay. It's just in the, in the bell stream. Now let's see if a wild Dave has appeared. Or do we have Fluffy Bunny Dave instead? I still see Fluffy, Fluffy Bunny, Bunny Dave. Dave. Dave always Fluffy Bunny Dave. Fluffy Yo. Bunny Dave. Hey, hey, we can hear him too. A wild Fluffy Bunny Dave appears. He's so amused. No, he's no. playing a game. <laughs> no, I'm playing a game because it's because I'm angry. Like, <laughs> come on, podcast time. That's, that's fine. I understand that, but this is... That was ridiculous. <laughs> Did you restart your whole computer? I had to restart everything, but in order to do that, I had to make sure I had everything saved, you know, saved properly, because, you know, I, have to, I had everything set up for work the next morning. But no, no, I can't have that. So... This is why well, work and play should be on totally separate computers. It yeah, is for but, me. I'm saving the company money. <laughs> um, so and, and technically, and technically, this was a work computer originally, anyway. So, well, let's just go around the room and talk about what we've been doing. We'll start with the person already on the podcast opening his alcohol. It's Dave. What have you been up to? I, um. Well, I um, I forgot that I upgraded my internet. Since the last time I turned on my PS4. Oh, so, so you I had to switch, re-log into all the internet stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say that your PSN download went faster. And uh, well, no, it did. <laughs> Once I got everything up and running, because um, yeah, apparently it's been like a month since uh, we redid the internet at the house. <laughs> so there was a lot of updates. In that time. <laughs> um, so I'm literally just in the you know the training demo of injustice because it finally like as per usual all the updates finally stopped right as the podcast was about to stop. Yeah. So so this is my first sip. So really enjoy this one. Yeah. Trust me. I've I've been jonesing for it all day. Well, well, we'll save that discussion until we'll save you for for last, Kate. Um, can can but, I say though that this is the best, um, I guess, like training, you know, demo that you have to go through? It is not. It is. It, it is not. You just get to smack around Superman. That is that is a po a pro, but it, the character, <laughs> the yeah, but the characters. <laughs> The, the the character um, trainers and the overall trainers are like basic moves only like it doesn't get you into like the 10 to 20 hit combo practice like I was hoping it was going to You're so that ruining my joke <laughs> yeah. the joke was you're Batman and you slap around Superman greatest training demo ever and you have be like 
Oh no, the 20 hit combo training should have been in there. Like, dude. Come on. Well, basically, what it, you're saying is the intro is still better than BVS. Oh, agreed. A hundred percent agreed. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, that's that's pretty true. The last the last chapter of the training demo is Batman and Superman just showing Martha at each other for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Press triangle for Martha really loud. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> I was so happy with my little Martha joke the other the other day, on. On Instagram, that was my favorite. Everybody saw that, right? I did not. No, I had. I you it. missed it. Oh, I saw. Oh, it. Man, I, don't dude. Use, I don't use Instagram. So, uh, well, I'll cross post to Facebook usually. Um, so I had. A, I bought a Coke. You know how the oh, Coke had names on them. So they have. So I bought one that said Martha on it, just so I could hang like a little Lego Batman from it. I have like a Lego Batman with the grappling hook, and he's hanging from, it and he's like. Why does your coke say that name? <laughs> and it's just... I, I thought it was funny. Oh, I thought you were going to put Superman on the other side of it and they were both screaming, Mine! Or something. No, okay, sure. no, no. That's... Me and Mommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Alright, yeah. So what have I been doing? Um, well, I fired up Injustice 2 and I'm watching Superman do this. He just did it again after I did it. Like he's mocking me. Oh, his like when you're just standing there, his like yeah. idle poses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so lame. <laughs> did Snyder design this? <laughs> if you keep um, if you keep doing stance switch, he like does a really weird dance. <laughs> I'll have to try that later because I don't even know how to do that. Her yet. body stance stays like super stiff. It's L two. Like, it's the best dad dance like ever. Yeah, but I can only control Batman right now. When you do control Superman, try that. <laughs> and now he's doing the Batusi. <laughs> hey, hey, what else you been playing besides Injustice right now? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> so still playing some Zelda. Um, I, I've really stagnated on that game, and I feel bad. Um, but I've also, I I played some kind of viral infection this weekend, so I didn't get a chance to play anything. Did Did um, you play it, or did it play you? Oh god, it played me. That was it was awful. I was like, it was like the first like warm days, so I was like, usually I'm like dying on the when it switches over to warm, but I actually like had like a big hooded sweatshirt on and everything. <laughs> and my wife was like, "You need to go to the doctors because you're dying," because I don't do that. Um, well, you no, know, it's true. I remember when you came to visit me and you were wearing shorts in, in January. January. In Canada, <laughs> so for me to put on a big bulky sweatshirt and shiver in the corner of the, on the couch is bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I did catch up on some TV. Um, I caught up on Agents of Shield. Caught up on Flash. Um, I've been watching Samurai Jack because that's back and awesome. Yeah. Did anybody, anybody watch that? Anybody used to watch it? I, I used to watch it. I have not watched the new ones. I know yeah, it's supposed one, to be good. The new ones are great. It's 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 great. Um, I mean, I'm assuming it's all the original, you know, people behind it because it's it certainly feels like the original. Um, but yeah, they're doing a great job on it. It's, it's got a lot of laughs in it. I'm digging it. Um, um, yeah, it's if you like the original, you'll like this. Um, what else? What else? What else? We we talked about Guardians last week. <laughs> Joe Cool says your goatee is on point. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's as I'm getting older, I get the, the little Ray Shagul kind of thing going. <laughs> the color. Ooh, does that mean I can kill you? <laughs> no, he has a Lazarus pit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that is. does mean I can kill him. That's the whole point. <laughs> you just have to keep him by the Lazarus pit. <laughs> that would yeah, you know his know that his brand like alex's kid is gonna be damian wayne and it's just like just kill alex now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm already gonna try raising him like sarah connor did in terminator 2 <laughs> to her son because that might be necessary so what else did you play if anything <laughs> Since you've been dodging the question now for like 20, 22 minutes. What are you talking about? We talked about Injustice. We talked about Zelda. And you're acting like I don't play anything. 
How dare you, sir? <laughs> How dare you? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Matt, how about you? <laughs> um, well, uh, still playing Witcher 3. I've uh, moved on to Skellige, although I do need to go back and finish up some question marks back in... Uh, uh, I've already forgot what the second area was called. Um, not Belen, but the Novigrad part of the second Pit area. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah. Um... And Joe Cool says a dollar Matt's going to say Ratchet and Clank. No, no Ratchet and Clank, surprisingly. <laughs> no, no Ratchet and Clank, no. No, the, uh, I, I wouldn't wouldn't mind, but uh, we still don't have a new game, so, yeah, I'm, I guess. Shouldn't complain, we just have one. Uh, sort of new game. I'm probably going to go back and play that, actually, next week. <laughs> instead of just, like, all the new stuff I have. Did you never finish it, or did you just... You know something? I didn't finish the new one. Which oh, is... Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't I cannot know. even... I don't even know how that happened, because that's that's the first time for that. You know, you, you should have at least three platinums just from Ratchet and Clank games. Yeah, you think I would? You think? Um, I actually so... I actually stopped just short of it, just to prove a point. <laughs> it's it's mental. You're <laughs> mental. Something something's mental. That's yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's what I know. It's, it's mental <laughs> the uh so yeah so still doing that um you know now with the news today i've, I've actually got to get it done before netflix gets their tv series going um I but would say, I, to anyone else it's like you've got plenty of time like if you uh, think of yeah for me they haven't even cast it yet but i'm still in trouble um uh, haven't gotten around to haven't gotten to play more Horizon. Uh, just been super busy and haven't had time for the wife and I to sit down and and both be around to do that. Uh, so that's really it. Except we did stick our toe back into Rock Band Four. Um, I think we covered on the news the other day that uh, the week I say that that they're switching the Rivals mode to a seasons format. Uh, so they're calling everything up till this point season zero, and it, that ends in four weeks. Uh, so whatever rank you are, your uh, clan is by the by the end of season zero, you get a outfit prize based on what what uh, rank you're at. And so since we spent most of our time at platinum, we're trying to get back to platinum. Um, it would be nice if they just gave you the reward of the highest rank you ever held, because that would make this a lot less stressful. But uh, trying to get back up there uh case in point it was just my daughter and i that played this week and we scored high enough to get third at the bronze rank with just two of us playing so um i will contribute this weekend i promise all right so uh yeah we, we filled up the clan i kicked a couple of people that hadn't ever contributed and filled up with new requests because i had a bunch of new requests hey, where's that picture of lion cat <laughs> uh, anyone that anyone that's non-performing will get booted so we'll keep keep cycling in folks until we get people who contribute deep, deep. But, mark's uh, gonna be complaining he got kicked uh, mark's not mark's gonna contribute this weekend he really is <laughs> it really isn't gonna, trust me dude you're gonna get there's gonna be something dude and just come on you got too much distraction going on right now <laughs> to go back to that you're not going back no i'll, I'll do it was one song on the list and that I, i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it so um so i figure you know if we get we can get at least half the you're crew in. now he's just gonna do it to prove me wrong yeah i, I appreciate <laughs> i saw that you didn't have to explain that but yes. you know thanks <laughs> it's like that one scene in guardians of the galaxy 2 which i also saw this week really you had to explain that to us over the course of like five minutes you couldn't have just uh, Anyway, um, so uh, let's see that Rock Band Two, or Rock Band Four, excuse me. Um, then the only other thing I've really been playing is the uh, Star Wars Puzzle Droids, kind of ground to a near halt because the puzzles have gotten hard enough to the point where I'm not beating them on the first or second try necessarily. Uh, so that that's slowed down, but still working on that. Uh, Dave, are you still playing that? Because I know I, I kind of got you hooked on the one night, but. Uh, you did know, you abandon that? You know what the funny thing is? Um, after I woke up the next day, I forgot it was on my phone. Because... <laughs> <I t> <laughs> the, 
because I don't, I don't, oh, I don't think of my phone for games. You know, I. So I, I don't either I, usually, but when the rare occasion, I, when a rare occasion, I do have something on there. I, I tend to forget about. <laughs> Uh, so I have to remind Mark he's got Doctor Who to catch up on. I've got to remind you you've got a Star Wars game on your phone, and you got to remind me about Doctor Who too because uh, yeah, I'm way behind on that. So oh. you are now officially labeled the Doctor Who autoresponder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, for games that's pretty much been it. Uh, most of the it's time, just like, be like knock knock knock. Did you who yet? Did you who yet? <laughs> Did you, yep. get, did you get, and you need to Doctor Who because this season is awesome and I don't have yeah, anybody I, outside of my family to talk I know, to. I know. It's, it's not that I don't want to. It's just that I I keep forgetting about it. I will try and make an effort. I don't forget. It's on my DVR and it's creeping up on that like <laughs> five episodes is going to start deleting. So, so I'm going to watch it this weekend and I'm caught up on just about everything else so I can yeah, see, jump I, into it this weekend. All the DC shows we're just way behind on. The only one we're even close is Legends of Tomorrow, and we still have like half a season of that. At this point, we're just waiting for Netflix so we can watch it, not have to fast forward commercials. I'm right there here with you. Do Flash? You're not. Oh. I know. Get caught up on that show again. Flash has been good. They're all good. I I just can't watch them until they're at the end of the seasons. Uh, right before this, I just rewatched the season finale of uh, Agents of Shield with the fam. Uh, that was a very, very, very satisfactory uh, ending. They they really did a, a great job on those the, the so uh, and then that season out. So now, when it comes back again, it will be on Fridays. Yeah, that that was the other news. Fridays uh, in September, Inhumans launches in theaters, and then it starts two weeks later. Two weeks, yeah, two weeks later on Fridays on uh, ABC, and then after its eight week run, Agents of Shield will start mid season. Hasn't had an actual date locked on to it, so we don't know if mid season's post holidays or just immediately upon the completion of. Uh, Wait, Inhumans. so we don't get anything till September now? Yeah, no, nothing, nothing new because uh, wow, you know. Agent Carter would have filled the gap, but that's not with us anymore. Um, the promo for Inhumans is just voiceover stuff, but it sounds like a pretty standard. Uh, Maximus is looking to overthrow the king storyline. So get out of here! Learn. Get right for those out! Who are familiar with Inhumans, uh, the royal family will get the uh, standard fare right out the gate. Uh, I think they need to modify Black Black Bolt for TV by having him be an opera singer. <laughs> yeah, that would help. Uh, there's actually been a lot of talk about, you know, can, why don't they just have them use real sign language instead of doing some custom thing that they were talking about. So it'll be interesting to see if they do reshoots to incorporate sign language into it or, or what they're going to do. Um, I actually know a lot about sign language. Um, you know, it's not universal. No, it's not. Yeah, it's literally like every language has its own sign language. That's why it's called ASL. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was the neatest thing, that there's like, that it's just like regular language. Everybody does it different. I thought that was pretty cool. Couldn't be like, it couldn't be the same as Canadian Sign Language because we wouldn't have the symbol for A. Or a boot. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> I've never said, I've never said A in my no, and I tried to get her to do it too. <laughs> I, I was, I, I, I would have loved to have seen that. Anytime, yeah, any, dude. Anytime I saw her talking to like real Canadians, I was just like, nothing, <laughs> nothing. They are so much like us; it's scary. Well, unless they're from Ottawa, that's where that's where that happens. I learned that one firsthand. Empirical evidence. Everywhere in Canada is nice and normal, except Ottawa. Dude, it is so nice there. <laughs> I want to go back. I don't know. The, the, the French parts of Montreal are kind of... Well... French here. Or no, yeah, not, not Montreal. Um, Quebec. Quebec. Sorry. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't go, I, didn't go there, I didn't go there, and I didn't want to go there. I went to the nice parts. <laughs> Montreal is really nice, and there is English there as well. But there is, yeah. Yes, Hank the Tank, Kate is from Canada, the rest of us are stateside. Damn dirty Americans. That's right. Um, 
so yeah, the, so let's see, we've caught up on Doctor Who, caught up on... Probably thought Matt stuff. was the Canadian, because his accent's more Canadian than Kate's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're fact, talking about. <laughs> talking about. fact, I think you're further north. I've never rebooted once in my life. Uh, uh, you just rebooted, sir. Right there. <laughs> I've only booted my computer. Um, so yeah, the, but... Uh, where, 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 where were we? Yeah, uh, Agents of Shield, etc. Any other shows yeah, that you're caught up on? Yeah. Um, see, anything else? It seems like there was another show we were watching, but I can't. So wait, have we all have we all uh, uh, seen Guardians of the Galaxy at this point? Then? I haven't. Kate has not. Okay, no, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. So, uh, saw we that. Spoilers. Well, we wouldn't talk spoilers anyways because it's spoiler cast. But, but yeah, don't let me stop you talking. Okay. He was just trying to get you to say about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we'll, we'll end up doing a podcast on that one specifically or not, but I have thoughts. I shared them all, mostly. Yeah. Uh, but what else? Anything else? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm torn with Alien Covenant. I want to see it. They've, they've given me enough that I, I have hope. But I still feel the sting of Prometheus very, very, very badly. What? Why? All right. I... Prometheus was horrible. It was it terrible in every sense of the word. I've seen a lot worse, but it wasn't fantastic. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to sit there and say, like, it's, like, especially if you compare it to, like, the first two Alien movies. Like, no. Okay. I it's, get it, that. It's, but it's, it, I don't know. I liked it better than Alien uh, Resurrection. Yeah, exactly. Like it's they're I, they're certainly I way worse movies. Resurrection. Alien Three. Resurrection. Really I think that Resurrection was, was which one? The one with Winona Ryder. The, uh, the really Winona. bad one. Well, that that one was also bad, but that one at least had a level of camp to it, and it had uh, Ron Perlman. So those things kind of make it a different type of movie that I can live with. This was just oh, I can't, I can't even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except there, the whole movie going. Why am I watching this? Thing? I think so Alien. Freaking. I think Alien Three doesn't get enough. You know, it doesn't get enough credit. Alien, Alien, Alien Three is pretty solid. Um, well, yeah, I, I agree. I want to watch it. Um, I don't know if I'll. I don't know if we will this weekend yeah, or not. But I would like it'll, to. It'll be a five dollar movie view if if I do. So we'll we'll see. I, I I think I've talked Ian into seeing it this weekend so that he can be my barometer because he and I both hate Prometheus. So. Uh, I'll I'll be able to go off of his barometer on that, but um, what? It doesn't mean you'll both like Covenant. No, it doesn't. But it at least gives me something to gauge by. <laughs> Although I don't know, uh, is it see? I would worry about that because I think that if he sees it and gets like so angry about it, he might tell you to just go see it just so he can share the hate. <laughs> He might, but again, this oh. is why it'll only be on five dollar day if I do go see it. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, okay. Yeah, just getting ready for graduations and stuff. So. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go so that we can do Kate last, as I mentioned a minute ago. Um, let's see. I've been playing Clash Royale a lot. Uh, I've been playing still the um, Solitarica. I really thought I could out that you would you would ease up on that. No, you know what? Um, it's because one of my uh, longtime college friends who had uh, headlined one of the most famous dance troops in the United States. He's playing it, and he got me into it. So, um, so it's kind of a communication thing, as well as. If that makes sense, there's like more going on than just playing, but um, but there's yeah, a lot it, of random stuff in that in that little paragraph. Yeah, a lot of random stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like a drug-addled story. Right <laughs> you missed the you missed a couple of those before you got on back on. Um, so yeah, um, been playing Clash Royale, Solitarica. Uh, I have not touched Persona again since I beat it. And I'm not. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do there. Um, I got injustice, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and uh, still, very much enjoying Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. 
Um, we started the first two episodes of American Gods, and it's a, it's everything I wanted it to be. I thought my wife was not going to like it because it's super bloody in the first one, and she was like, "What are you having me watch?" And then she was hooked by the end of episode one, and was like, "I got to see what happens next." I'm like, "Good, good, good." Yes. That was the other show that's really, yeah, I've been watching that, and that's fantastic. Yeah. And, um, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and a couple other things, but yeah, that's about it. It's great to see that both American Gods and Handmaid's Tale, the books are also selling really, really well. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And Which I'm, I'm... Yeah, what what concerns me though is is that, um, like I think by the end of season one of Handmaid's Tale, they will have exhausted the literary works on which it was based. So I will be interested to see what they're gonna do for a season two, because that's a little weird. Um, but yeah, they just got to the first big plot twist in there, and my wife apparently wanted it to go the complete opposite direction that it went. So she's, she's a little off put right now, uh, on how the story took its turn, but I think she'll be all right with, with a few more episodes. Once we get farther into the book, this is one of the ones that for some reason I read and I remember. So I know pretty much what's going to happen in it, which she was very dismayed to find out that I actually knew what it was and that I knew everything that was going to happen. Cause she hates when that happens. Um, but yeah, uh, so so far they've been pretty they've been pretty true to the book so I'm I'm interested to see uh, they have made a couple changes um, for television which I actually like the changes they've made so that I guess that's a plus um, but I'll be interested to see where they take it once they get to the end of the book because even the book leaves a lot out like they leave a lot to the imagination so I, I'll, I'm interested to see where the writers take it because so far they've been really good about recreating it. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I'm, I'm glad American gods is selling cause that was a good book. I, that's one that I don't remember every, I read it once in a hurry and I remember the major plot points, but I do not remember a lot of the smaller stuff. So I'm, I, it, it's, it's a good, I love the actors. I really want that main character to be Bishop in the next X-Men movie, he is like, just give him some Jerry Curl and the M over his eye and he's good to go. He's a badass and that's exactly what Bishop is. So I'm totally down with it. And that's exactly like they, that guy is exactly who you picture or exactly who I pictured when reading the book. Like I don't, I cannot, they have not nailed casting of like a book character, but picture I've had in my head. Hmm? I, I don't know. Um, I had to do it. Well, I guess I can look on our magic screen here. So it was American Gods originally a novel? I was yeah. trying to remember this. Yeah. It's a Neil Gaiman novel. Yeah, it's it, a novel. Yeah, I know it was Neil Gaiman, but I didn't know if it was one of his, tra of his no, uh, graphics or if it was a novel. That novel, novel. Uh, the main character is... What was that, Kim? <clears throat> fun to try and find space for it on the shelves. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, that's the book. Four hundred and five looking mini Milano. <laughs> which looks know. way better than the current full size Milano, which is yeah, sad. Yeah. It is sad. The uh it's a lot different than the original one they released. Yeah, which I never picked up, so like it, it would be fine uh, if you don't have like it's fine if you don't have the original one. Yeah, but I remember what the original one looked like. Yeah, then you're screwed. Because I looked at that box and went, oh my gosh, what did they do to it? And while Mark's looking, I did remember two other things. Um, watched Independence Day 2, which is a soulless waste of film. And then uh, I've all been watching uh, Attack on Titan Season 2, and that is just a hot mess. So... <laughs> You're just not having a good week. With I'm not having a lot of good luck here with stuff. Ricky Whittle is his name. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything else. <clears throat> I don't think I've seen him in anything else. To, to be honest, I, I mean, they could have used the guy from uh, Supergirl 
and uh, True Blood. I think he would have worked well also. The guy playing uh, Jimmy Olsen? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's pretty... Oh, but, but I mean, this guy, I agree. This guy is perfect. He's... Oh, is he from the 100? Is he? I don't remember him in the was 100. He? He's British, so he's probably in a bunch of British stuff we haven't seen. Uh, oh, he just kind of looks like Lincoln from the 100. There it is. Known for... Oh, yeah, he, he is Lincoln from the 100. There you go. Is that Lincoln? Is that... Yeah. What? Yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> Matt wins. Yeah, Matt wins in internet. Now let's see if I can close the right tab and not close the entire browser window <laughs> this time. Yay! Oh, fantastic technology. So yeah, um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, Kate, I know you've been chomping at the bit. We're all chomping at the bit. Well, I'm chomping at the bit also to discuss it. What have you played this week, Kate? <sighs> So, so is what is it? Is it, is it a click? Is it a clicker or is it actually a fight game or what is it's it? A, it's, it's a fight game. They've uh, you use the swipes to like do attacks and stuff. But is it like the Mortal Kombat one that they had yes. before? Um, they ripped the uh, graphics out of the game, so it looks fantastic. It's just my phone hmm. is like really really old, so it's like chugging when it's playing it. Like the lo the loading takes forever, but it's still like really 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 fun. So, so that, and then, oh, sorry. No, I, I wanted to tell you about this because this was this was something that I thought you would find amusing. There was a discussion in the chat earlier today where basically there was Matt goes, I can't believe they're selling all of these these coins on the PSN for injustice and people are stupid enough to buy them. And I was like, Matt, no, no, no. The only thing you can buy with those things are shaders. You can't buy the boxes like you can in Overwatch or anything yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And he was like, that's even worse. And I'm like, no, that's a good thing because it's not pay to win. He's like, no, I can't believe that people are stupid enough to buy shaders. I'm like, what? You should be happy it's not pay to win. And then Dave got in on the bandwagon. He's like, no, that's dumb. That's dumb that you can't, that you have to pay real world money. Yeah. No, um never played a fighting game have you <laughs> not like i i, I have games. played fighting paying games. money for colors is has been a thing for a long time i in i, I get that i it, it just just saddens me it, it it saddens me that that we're willing to just throw away money just to have a slightly different now if you're like a professional level player or you're in the competition and you're like way up there I kind of get it, or you're trying to be up there, but just some schmuck as myself, just mostly playing the computer because I can't play well enough to be human beings. I'm right there with you. I mean, hey, I'm, I remember the days when the first DOA came out, and there was all these costumes you can unlock just by playing the game. You can and still it, unlock all that stuff just by playing the game. And that's what I said, but then, the, but then. You know, I said you it said does go slower. Really it goes really slow. Which no, I said it goes. Someone who plays like myself. It goes slower. It doesn't mean that it's so slow that you're never gonna get there. I've got forty-five or forty-seven hundred out of the six thousand I need for for a Golden Age Flash alternate costume. So it's not like you can't get there. It's just slower than the other currencies that yeah. Although there's one currency that I still don't have that I don't know what it even does. Do you know which one I'm talking about, Kate? Yeah, the purple, the pink one. I'm guessing that's the moves. I bet you get a currency for that, and that's how you... You don't, you don't. Oh, you don't man. You currency for anything in the loot boxes. Boo, okay. Except for the shaders. Okay. So let's talk about Injustice. You, you've beaten it, I've beaten it. W what do you think of the story mode so far? What do you think of... Best story mode that's ever been in a fighting game. It's a. I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn story or Persona story, but it's up there with those as probably like it's like game of the year story quality. The story is amazing, like amazing. 
And one of the things that makes it so amazing is NetherRealm got the facial animations down so pat that you feel with these characters because you no, know, like a lot of games have like super good voice, like um, faces and stuff but they still can't get all the um, facial movement, especially in like the eyebrows and around the eyes. So they don't show the same level of um, emotion that, you know, when your like eyebrows move and your eyes get all expressive, when you're feeling something, this game has done that amazingly well. Like amazingly well. This is a story mode that's better than any DC movie that's come out since Dark Knight. It's like leaps and bounds <coughs> better than any yeah. DC movie is on par or better than some of the DC animated universe movies. It is that good. Well, well I, I okay, I have a couple exceptions. Not, or, or, all, not all of the DC animated movies. I didn't oh, no, no. But, but even so, there are some glaring plot holes in this one. The first one was super tight on the story. This one's a little looser with the playbook. They, they don't explain some of the things that really do need to be explained. Um, but I, I do think it's a little it bleak. Uh, it, yeah. No, but I, That's but I point. think they they had a chance to tell a somewhat more upbeat story, no. but they passed they passed over it for just super bleak, and I think they could have told a a story that had better weight out of it if it wasn't just also doom and gloom i'm not saying i agree it's better than any movie that's come out since the dark knight 100 percent agree with think, you i don't think bleakness is anything to take away from it this is the empire strikes back of injustice universe yeah i suppose yeah i suppose i, I can see that point I, I just i think they had an opportunity that that to me a little bit feels like they they missed in not <clears throat> in not taking it a different direction but I could not disagree more okay no problem <laughs> mark you ignorant sluts <laughs> <laughs> but it's it is i agree it's, it's wholeheartedly very good and it's beautiful and then we'll get to like the gameplay part um they were extremely smart with creating like the loot box system because it's super addictive it's Anyone who plays, like, Overwatch will tell you, like, getting loot boxes is, like, the pinnacle of, it's, like, it's why you play to get loot boxes. So, getting them here and opening them up, even when you open it and it's all like, oh, this is all crap, you're still just like, I want more loot boxes! So, it's got that RPG collection element to it that is going to give it legs with people who normally don't have legs with a fighting game. Because most people who play fighting game are on casual level. Like most like that's that's why Street Fighter V failed miserably because they did not market to the casual people. They only thought about competitive tournament people. Tournament people are still going to play this game like in two years. But normally for a fighting game, like after a couple months, you know, playing drops way off because the casuals move on to something else. This game, with the collection of gear and leveling up the characters like an RPG system, gives it more legs than any games would normally have, which is great. The fighting from, if you play in Justice 1, the fighting feels a lot better, like it feels smoother and not quite as clunky. It still feels clunky to me because I'm more used to Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat's a lot faster, but uh, it's, it feels a lot, a lot smoother than it did. Um, and and they've done a lot of quality of life kind of pickups yeah. in in uh, if you have somebody who's constantly using zoning attacks, you can you can burn meter to dodge past it and get to the other side of them, close the gap. So they've they've addressed a lot of longstanding issues there. I'm actually surprised. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I I'm actually surprised that you didn't mention that um, NetherRealm Studios did something I think I've not seen in a fighting game yet, which is make a really strong cast of lead female characters for the majority of the game. Yeah, oh, oh well, that's like... I didn't really talk about it because it's part of the story. Well, I can say that in a generic way, in that there are yeah. a lot of strong female leads. I, I actually really thought that was awesome, personally. Fair. Okay, 
So where you were saying, like, personally, you thought the story was too bleak, personally for me, the one thing I don't like in the Injustice universe is I don't like it when Wonder Woman is evil. Well, I agree. Wholeheartedly. So, it's like, on a personal level, I'm just like, Ugh. I don't care if Superman's evil because I don't like Superman that much. So he can be evil all he wants. But, uh, yeah, it's like when Wonder Woman's bad, I'm like, oh, bye. But Harley is, like, you know, normally I was just kind of like, oh, Harley's just, she's cute, but she's just kind of there. Now I'm just like, I love this character in this game. She's amazing. But yeah, there's lots of, like, great, just characters all around are, are really, you know, well written, and they do a lot of the, um, you know, when they clash or when they talk to each other at the beginning of matches, there's a lot of character stuff in there, too. So it's not just, like, throw away canned intros. There's still character development and interactions and, you know, comic booky quips and stuff that are in there, and it's, it's great. Uh, and there's a lot of different, like, the, a lot of different modes and stuff. There's tons of single player content, so you're you're really getting kind of your money's worth because there's all this like single player, like story mode stuff. But um, one thing that they did that's really interesting because when NetherRealm did Mortal Kombat 9, pretty much every other fighting game followed their suit in how they do their story modes. And now NetherRealm has again done it where there's part of the story mode where you can play you can choose your own path and play, like you'll have two characters that are kind of working as a team and you can choose which one you're going to control. And then you can go back and play the other side of it and the game, you know, even has, like it has replay value even in the story mode, so it'll be really interesting to see down the road how many other fighting games copy them on that part too. So like copy them within copying them, within copying them. So it should be like cool to see. Well, and I think one of the interesting modes that I just started scraping into last night was uh, uh, that of um, uh, multiverse, which yeah, that, you know, something I was about about to talk to him about. Is, which I think is going to be kind of, Dave's preferred way to play. Oh, that's my preferred way to play. I don't really like playing online that much. I'll probably play online a little bit to get like guild boxes, but I much prefer the single player. And there's lots of different tier levels of things you can do. Like there's a story mode and then you can go into the multiverse and there's like the battle simulator multiverse where you can do like the arcade ladders and get the typical, you know, old timey fighting game thing where you play as your character and you get their little ending. But it's nice in this one that it's actually narrated by the character and it feels like it's even more character building. And point on that, the voice acting in this game is incredible. Like it's really good. Uh, but yeah, in the multiverse they have it's kind of like the living towers if you played Mortal Kombat X. It's essentially like that, but built upon, so it's even slicker and even better. But you can go in there and sh there's like multiverses that are like easy, but might only be there for an hour, and then there's ones that are really tough, and might be there for a month, and you can kind of choose how you want to play it. Like if you just, if you're not very good at fighting games or you just are beginning, there's lots of really easy content, or if you're someone who's actually, you know, pretty good. There's lots of other things that are, you know, higher level if you don't want to go into, like, ranked matches or you know, whatever. The the one thing, though, it's the same as, like, with Overwatch's loot boxes. So you're sometimes at the mercy of the RNGs. So mm -hmm. you're you know, if you... This game does have a, um, something I wish Overwatch actually had is a character bias for drops. You can turn it on and off in the menu. So when you have character bias on, you get a hot, you get more gear for the character you, you're using. So like, I my main is Catwoman, so I have way more Catwoman stuff than I do for any other character. But if I leveled her up and got all the best gear for her, and I didn't need anything else, and I still wanted to play as her, I could turn that off and get gear drops for like other characters. Like I mean, you still get drops for other characters, but it gives you a higher percentage of getting for the character that you're using, which is nice as opposed to like. Like I said, I wish Overwatch would do something like that. And one of the things they don't explain very well, but you start to figure it out when you're in multiverse, is that you get what are called uh, retrain tokens for your gear, oh, which, yeah, yeah if, I, if I got a piece of gear at level 3, and now I'm level 19, I can use a retrain um, badge on it to bring it up to level 19, and it gets level 19 appropriate stats and whatnot. So if you start picking up epic gear and 
don't want to, you know, you're having a hard time rolling at higher levels, you can retrain that to match up to that level. They don't explain that very well within the construction of the game. The well, UI... The point, though, that we're at, you don't really need to. Right, right. If by the time, like, because I've seen it explained already in, like, the health screens, but, like, when you first start out, you don't need to worry about regening your gear because you're so low level anyway. Right. You might have a character that's, like, level 8 before they, like, when they tell you, and it's like, oh, okay, I can do that when I get there. But they have another thing where if you really like the look of something, but you like the stats of something else, you can transform it so you can move the stats over so it will just look like the gear that you like, but it'll have the stats of the other gear. Yeah, it's a really well thought out system, um, uh, and it's a really deep system. Though I, I, I will still say that there are still major UI issues with it um mortal kombat x has similar you know online ui and and when you're in your guild stuff if i'm in my guild i should be able to invite somebody to play a match right from the guild screen I it's ui because when i think ui i think screen layout it's the menus that are the issue because there's lots it's like menus in menus in menus right but as far as just the presentation of those menus it's very slick looking and sleek and clean but it's just when you go into those menus, it's like more menus, more menus, more menus. But yeah, and a lot of functionality that should be yeah, there. Yeah, when I think UI, I think aesthetics. I don't think, like, use. Oh, no, when I think UI, I think exactly it's user interface. It's the how you get around, including the menus and that stuff. That I think that's all part one and the same. The design of it from an aesthetic, but then the design of being able... To, you, you shouldn't have to click more than you need to to get to where you need to go. And there's a lot of that in the menu system yeah. here. But, I, I mean, I, I don't want to make it sound like I don't like the game. That's not it. I think it's a phenomenal game. Um, if you had to give it a, just a preliminary score out of 10 right now, Kate, where would you sit at? Oh, geez, it'd be up there like 9.5. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking 9.2. But then again, I, I it's still, with the caveat, that this is still very early. I mean, I've beaten Story Mode once. I've played online some. I've done a little bit of the multiverse i need to log a lot more hours to be able to confidently say it's this score or that score but my initial gut reaction is about a 9.2 yeah i know it, it's it's there's a lot of other fighting games coming out very very shortly like guilty gear rev 2 tekken 7 um, marvel versus capcom infinite's coming out in a few months they're gonna have to they're have some, gonna have some competition to be better than this game I, I am actually now, like, taking a second. Tekken is one of my favorite fighting franchises, and now I'm sitting here going, I don't know that I want to go backwards because I feel like Tekken's going to be a step backwards. It Yes, it'll have all the combos I want that I like in Tekken that's there, but I just, I don't know. I, I remember what every other version of Tekken's story is, and I don't want that. Um, and, and I guess that's one other thing I wanted to say about multiverse is that like Mortal Kombat 10, when you beat something in the multiverse, you get the ending for the character you're playing, which is it's not like, something that you find. Arcade ladder. Yeah, it's like, it's like an arcade ladder. It's crazy. And, and I was not expecting to see Aquaman's ending when I finished my first multiverse run. Um, Aquaman. And, uh, yeah, that's, that'd be Tuesday. Is the same with, um, Mortal Kombat X's arcade ladders. After you play this, it's better to play the story mode first and then go through and play the arcade ladders because some of them are throwaway. I mean, Mortal Kombat X is like Sub Zero turns into Mother of Dragons. It's like that's totally just like, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, but, uh, some of them not only like give shading to the story but hint at what Injustice 3 story will be like because in Mortal Kombat X if you play through the arcade ladders there are hints what Mortal Kombat 11 story is going to be and and to be clear Matt she said shading not shaders <laughs> you gotta pay for those that's right you don't have to well you don't have to if you're but shade. you don't have but to they did do the thing. a lot of people were worried that it was going to be pay to play when they first announced this gear system they're like oh these people will just buy like all this stuff like, you know, think like Overwatch loot boxes. 
and then you know they'll be super OP on online, and no one will ever be able to beat them. You can. There's, I think there's the no thing possible way to buy gear. You have to earn it. I, I think the thing that really just kind of melts my brain a little bit, and this is just I'm old and I've never bought into the new way of doing things, is there's a fifty dollar denomination of these yellow crystals that you can buy. That means, in my mind, that it's not unreasonable that someone would spend fifty dollars to change the color of a character. Well, think about it. Think about it this way: that that is not. I think you are overthinking this, because all the time we play games where you buy aesthetic things to change the the. You get an extra doohickey on your character, so it looks different than the myriad of other characters that run around. We've done that in MMOs before. Because, yeah, like, with a fighting game, even if you're not, because, like, if you're a tournament player, you're playing a game for, like, ten hours a day. It's, like, a job. But, uh, even if you're casual and playing it, like, a few hours every day, you want to look at something different. Like, for, you know, because it's, like, you can only look at Batman in his typical Batman outfit for so long before you're, like, well, I wonder what, you know, he'd look like in a different color. And if you're spending that much time with a game, it's no different than you know, wanting to change your armor in an RPG. I, yeah, I Matt guess still I don't, disagrees. I, <laughs> I, I don't. Well, yeah, I don't play. I don't play that way. That that that's not a motivation for me. I I don't. I, I appreciate it when I'm in in game and, um, you know, I get a new armor and I put it on and it gives me a visual difference to the character but if it didn't it wouldn't somehow destroy my enjoyment of the game and I wouldn't pay extra to make it do that yeah but like so, you're saying most people will not pay extra right I mean you don't have to do that you, it's it's if you want to rush it they give you a way to do so if I, if I said you know what I don't want to spend time burning time to to farm these crystals out so that I can get my golden age flash and I just want to give them five bucks for golden age flash skin then I've got an option to do that you don't have to do that you do have an option okay now when when I and again this may just be that I don't play fighters that way I take whatever the default character is or if I unlock a skin playing the game I might change something but you say shaders to me. That means I'm just changing the color of the the outfit. Yeah, most of the time it colors, is. The main colors. It, it can also you be. You say all... skins. That's something completely different to me. It's both. Shaders. It's both. There. It's that's where they live in the game is so under you the can shaders. Unlock shaders and skins. Correct. Because you say shaders to me. That means just colors. So no, they, it's shaders. both. It's both. It's shaders and skins. But not all characters have alt alt skins. So. Only certain characters. In these games, I mean, the fact that the two though, the skins are like way better than Injustice One because it's like they went to the trouble of changing like the voice acting and all the dialogue. When you choose John Stewart Green Lantern, you're playing as John Stewart Green Lantern. Like you have the same moves as Hal Jordan, but all of his dialogue is redone. So it's a completely different voice actor. It's completely different flash dialogue, intro dialogue. You know, all of that is all completely different when you have different your skins. So that's like a really nice touch. And like with Supergirl turning into Power Girl, it's a completely different voice actor, all that stuff. Same with Reverse Flash and Flash. So I guess the the, the, the thing was, and, and I think this has already been stated, but, but do you think they've in any way shape or form made the pricing of the stuff just difficult enough to encourage people to just spend the money on it rather well, than wait and earn it you know you can totally unless you're a super completionist you can totally pay for this the in-game currency like you can earn it you, it's i almost have enough and i've only really done multiverse stuff if i wanted to buy like you know a catwoman shader or whatever if you wanted all shaders for all characters you know, either, yeah, you could play for 10 years or you could just buy them if you're super completionist. But, you know, if you want to buy a couple, if you want to get a couple different colors for the one character you play as, you can totally earn it in game. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say what? That finished story mode was probably about, I don't know, eight hours. 
and six. yeah, six, six, seven hours. By the time I finished it, I had most of what I needed to get a shader. The I think the average one's like forty five hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, four, four thousand. Yeah, and so I had almost enough to buy it at that point, and now I have more than that by playing another three hours. Um, I'm just, I think I'm at like 4,700 out of 6,000 that I need for that one. And as far as I know, that Golden Age Flash skin is the most expensive thing in the menus that I've seen. Um, but, you know, if... Oh, okay. So, so, Matt, think of it this way. If you are a huge Batman fan and you only want to play Batman, you want to main Batman, and that's the one that you're most concerned about, maybe there's going to be probably two or three skins that you're going to absolutely have to have. I don't like Batman. I don't want to play Batman, but there's a skin in there that's got a bright yellow yellow bat on his chest, and I, I want the, the people, the bad guys, to shoot him in the chest more. So I want to get that shader. That's 4,500, so I know that it'll take me probably like, I don't know, eight hours of playing to get that. No biggie. So, but it's, if you if you wanted to complete a character, if you were playing one character, let's use Batman as an example because he's probably got more than average, and say he's That's got pretty equal. Okay, so what? Twelve, fifteen options? Mm, no, not that many. Seven, seven, I think. Yeah, seven or eight. Well, it's like let's round up to ten just to make the math easy. Yeah. But seven's it's, fine. It's, it's, it's less than so that. if it's eight hours per thing times seven that that's a lot of hours at least for me in a fighting game that's a lot of hours that's 56 hours is, just to do gonna that like, you're not gonna realistically you're not gonna like like all the colors even if all the yeah. colors are cool you personally will not like all the colors that's just a given like people just so, okay don't i like get yeah you know, i'm that, gonna buy every single yeah, I, I would say I, I you're would, because that, that's the completion <laughs> to me. If I said Batman is my character, I'm going to unlock all the crap for Batman. So, that's so here's the real brain. world answer. Here's the real world answer, Matt. You sit down, you give the controller to your kids, and you let them play and farm that stuff for you while you're not playing because you don't want to play that much. And then when you, they have accrued enough, you will buy all the costumes for Batman and be happy. Or, That's what the, or the answer. even easier, you join an active guild. Right. They might kick you out because you're not active. But, <laughs> like, you can have a guild of, the limit is 50 people in a guild. And if your guild is super active, you're going to log off and log back in and you're going to have like 20 loot boxes to open. Yep. Just from guild stuff. So that's something we haven't even talked about yet. Dave, who does not like to go online or interact with other people, can still have the benefits of going online and interacting with other people by simply joining a guild. Yeah, it I takes like him. A, yeah, it takes him about two minutes. If you're not active, I kick you out. That's right. Um, but it takes him about two minutes to go in and find the ID code for his guild, which is Gamers Ledge, and you should all join. It's ID 008B37. 37, I believe, um, is our ID for our, our clan. Feel free to join. Uh, or our guild. Feel Ooh. free to join. DC but, Thanos is in the game. <laughs> yes. Yes, but Darkseid is in, in the game. That is correct. Yes, I uh, know he was first, and Thanos is the ripoff of him. It's a joke. Yeah. Yeah, except Thanos is better. Yeah. Um, But... My point is, is that you can uh, get benefits because the guild basically is like all those stats you've seen in games that are useless, Matt. That how long have you been playing? How many air air escapes have you done? How many roll dodges have you done? How many uh, like skirmish matches have you done with other guild players? It counts all that and gives you rewards for it. They they set gates, if you will. And after the guild has fought 50 games or 50 matches amongst each other online, playing with themselves locally, um, then it gives you a bronze box for everybody. Or, or if it, you do 100 air escapes, it's a diamond box for everybody. And it keeps going and it keeps going like that. So there's, there's different achievements, you might call them. Yeah, and the thing is with um, loot boxes, like, Whenever you're doing stuff in the game, like multiverse or story mode or, you know, whatever, you're earning coins, which you can use 
lesser extent, there's a few, like if you want to fight a, like a super boss fight in the multiverse, it's going to cost maybe like 10,000 coins to unlock it. But that sounds like a lot, but it's not because you earn a ton of coins. And once you start getting a lot of gear for your character, and especially if you're a higher level and you start getting like level one and two stuff, you can sell it for coins and use the coins to buy more loot boxes to get more gear. Yeah, so, so you're, I, always, you're always getting gear. I, I was, boxes. when I was playing with the loot box stuff, I was absolutely flabbergasted because I kept expecting the prompt to say, spend your shards on this now. And I'm like, oh, here it comes. Yeah, and then it never happened. And it's such a refreshing surprise to see a company actually say, no, the currency we want from you is time and not real money. And I want to point out one thing. If you're thinking, well, I don't play very often. I just want to go online and fight, but it's going to be a pain if, you know, I have to go against someone who spent like 100 hours in this game and look at all their like crazy epic gear that changes all their stats and makes them like unhittable. It, when you go online, there is an absolutely an option to turn off all the gears properties so it's purely cosmetic so you yeah. create a level playing field yeah right yeah i'm but, assuming that's what the tournament that's what the tournament, tournament folks will mode, use well there's a tournament mode for when it goes to like offline tournaments where you can like do all kinds of stuff but ranked right. matches specifically for online ranked gear does not work it's purely cosmetic because it wants to be a level playing field. If you're just like going into just a room just to frig around with your friends, you can absolutely turn gear on so you can be like, hey, look at all this cool stuff that I got. And you know, be like, you know, I have, I have three times the hit points, try and hit me. But if you don't <laughs> want to do that, you can absolutely turn it off. So one of the things that I thought was hilarious that I was looking at last night was Guild has a Guild chat that everybody in the Guild can see and you can link your items just like an MMO. You can say, look at my friggin' shield and, and link it in the chat so that everybody can see the stats. It's hilarious. The thing about the game, too, is that the gear isn't just for stats. There's each gear, like, um, there's like a head, torso, arms, legs, and each character has an accessory. Like, Batman's is utility belt. Superman or Supergirl is like the S crest. And Wonder Woman is her sword and shield. Like, they each have like a, an accessory kind of thing. Each piece of gear is slightly different. So not only with changing the shaders can you make your character look different, you can have like all these different gear pieces. So your character is going to be completely unique to, you know, what everyone else's looks like, which is kind of cool. And then you can change the color to whatever you want on top of that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, Matt, I, I get where you're coming from, but I think, I think it's, if you wanted to skip all the playing time, Yes, and you said, I must buy every shader for Batman. It comes down to, do you want to spend the time or or, or make your kids farm for, for playing for you? I mean, if the answer is you don't want to spend any money, yes, it's doable. Will it take you a long time? Yeah, probably figure eight hours per shader would be my rule of thumb. So if there's 10 of them for math, you're looking at 80 hours of investment time. If you say I don't, I don't want to spend eighty hours of investment time, then by all means, buy the shards for that. But the point is, is that that's not what you should be hung up on. What you, the colors are not what you should be hung up. It's the loot boxes, and those you can only earn in game, which means that you're going to be grinding on that forever, anyways, to get Batman to look the cool way you have in your head once you see what's what's available and what's out there. I was going to say, just for reference for the viewers. We're spending a lot of time talking about this, and it's an extremely small point in the much larger scope. <laughs> all the stuff, like you look at all the stuff that's available. It's so in this game. unlike us to focus on some kind of like weird little minutia. Yeah, <laughs> we never do that. Weird little minutia in the whole scope of how much content there is in this game. Like a lot of people. As I'm looking at all the colors now. Street Fighter got a lot of crap. Like, this is... Street Fighter V is the pinnacle of what not to do with a fighting game, where there was nothing when that game started. Like, and there still isn't... Like, there's still no arcade mode even in it, but this game has... I'd say even more content than Mortal Kombat X did at launch. 
Oh, I agree. So, much so if you're wondering, is it is it worth it for like you know how much you're getting your money's worth for this game? Like there are yeah. so many different things that you can do in this game. Yeah, and if we we didn't mention it before, but our goal of with the website is always to help you wisely spend your discretionary time and income, and this is by all means a. I would say a if you are any kind of DC fan or fighting game fan, this would be a must buy, in my opinion. And the thing is, there's still nine characters to come. There, there are going to be nine DLC characters. Three have been announced: Starfire, Red Hood, and Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat, obviously. But there are nine characters total that you're still going to get. They're going to release them one at a time eventually, and they're all going to have their own gear and all that kind of stuff. But so there's still more content coming. I can't help but think that there's going to be more alt alt skins as I well, agree. because there's there's just not that many of them, and I I, I know a bunch of characters. This is a little small thing. We were talking about this last night. We were just talking. I had mentioned um, like John Stewart Green Lantern. You can change it so, like you can be Hal or John, but in the Green Lantern specifically, he has shaders so he can be every lantern in the spectrum. Yeah. And when you plays him, the lantern crest changes to the correct lantern, lantern, which is just a cool, tiny little thing they didn't have to do, but they totally did, and it's awesome. And all his constructs for his moves all change to that color, too. So if you're a black lantern, all his, like, constructs turn to black, or all the constructs turn to orange, or, you know, whatever. And it's just, it's really cool. Yeah, and, and I... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just say everything I've seen about the game so far is that there was a a, a ridiculous amount of ton and love poured into this thing, um, which is why when not knowing that there was any real money purchasable stuff, and I was browsing the store on Tuesday, I was just like, "What? Okay, this game just fell apart for me because now now it's just buy monies, pay things. Okay, whatever, fine, I'm done." No, um, it's, it's easy fatalities all over again. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, that's that's really what I was expecting. That's really what I was expecting, is I was expecting them to break out portions of it and try and monetize DLC harder. That's why when you said you were, you were upset about this, Matt, my mind just kind of, like, boggled because I was like, no, this is the exact opposite of that. They're actually learning from their friggin' stuff in the past I, I i can't yeah there is a ton of love and stuff in the game and what i this thought they were going to do they didn't so i was happy also, in in terms of <laughs> i was watching a streamer and they like burned fireware so hard about it and they were like you know this is what a budget properly utilized looks like <laughs> <laughs> well no let, let's take that a step further a feature complete game upon launch looks like that's yeah. what it looks like it's crazy there's <laughs> nothing that? wrong yeah uh, apparently nether realm studios does and the only <laughs> things that are wrong with it are things that naturally happen when you get like because you can qa a game out the butt but as soon as you get like a power to the 10 of people playing it because qa you're gonna get maybe a couple hundred people playing it checking for like game crashing bugs and stuff it doesn't um Stuff is, gonna, stuff is gonna crash when you like get a game at launch and it's like super popular, right? Like, why are you laughing? Dave no, is Dave, playing Dave, Injustice while we are freaking while oh, no, and he's was... button mashing while he's doing it. Dave, stop playing Injustice while we're on the podcast. What? I'm totally not. Good Whatever girl. you. <laughs> you are if, hearing things. If you I can't see. play it, then you can't play it. <laughs> no, this you yeah. were playing it. That's the thing. I can't play it. Because I'm doing this, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Anyway, what was I? <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, um, oh, you were talking about bugs, which I have yet to see oh, any really. The only things there's a few like um, when you're trying. There's a few different modes within King of the Hill modes and stuff where you're going into that stuff that kind of like matchmaking is crashing a little, and that's just stuff that happens naturally because so many people are playing a, a big game like this at once like this game is going to sell like millions like there's no question about that so the only problems with the game are ones that kind of naturally happen that they they kind of iron out like you know server problems as opposed to 
Assassin's Creed level of game crashing bugs released on launch day that they have to have an emergency patch for. So, like, this game is insanely polished, insanely ready to go. And, of course, there's going to be patches because that's the nature of fighting games. But if you're were, if you're one of those people that's like, I'm not buying any more games at launch because they're never finished, you're pretty safe with this one. All right, so we need to move on to our other discussion topic. I don't no even know if we're going to get to the get to the news. Uh, so, there's no news this week, by the way. It's Matt, pre E three, it's pretty barren. Yeah, Matt, you have um, you have made a lifestyle choice <laughs> that <laughs> some people are having difficulty coming to grips with. And some would say it's monk like. Some would say it's monk like. <laughs> Others would say that it is that, that uh, would be monastic. Monastic, <laughs> yes. Uh, other people say that it is borderline self flagellation. Nah. Nowhere near that bad. Well, you're you're kind of hurting yourself in a way. See, the thing is, I don't think it's that surprising because it takes him 10 million years to finish a game anyway. <laughs> well, it, he is slow uh, but and thorough. <laughs> thorough is 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 definitely part of that. Um, Dude, I beat Tomb Raider in like a week and a half. <laughs> so, so, let's talk about your lifestyle choice. Tell the people what your lifestyle choice is for 2017 and how that's going. Um. So, I decided... Uh, at the end of last year, 2016, that I was going to, to the largest extent possible, not buy any new games this year. And no new video games. Now, those of you who have been watching the show say, hey, but you bought a Switch, and hey, but you bought Zelda, and hey, but you got Horizon. And there are logistical issues. My wife and gift certificates mostly covered the Switch and Zelda. It was also a birthday present in advance for the two boys who have summer birthdays. And uh, one of them had it, so we wanted him to have time with the system before he headed out. So, I mean, they're just logistical issues there, mostly done by others. And, and Horizon was a gift. So, you know, the, I, I have not for myself purchased a game this year. Uh, I have purchased DLC to uh, keep up with Rock Band because every week Rivals, one of the stupid Spotlight songs, is a song I don't have because it's usually a new song that just dropped. So it's not that I haven't spent any money on a video game habit. I have, but I haven't bought a, a, a game in whole just for my own wants and desires. Uh, this was driven by several factors, um, one of which is strictly budgetary. You know, it's just looking at the amount of money I spend on on entertainment items between movies and comics and games and other stuff. It was just we needed to to pull back for a while and just You're never actually supposed get... to look at that, and this is the reason why. <laughs> and and you know, kind of just... like how you don't look at the screen right now, Dave. What exactly. Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, you're looking at a screen, but not the screen you should be. Yeah, the camera's just at a weird angle. That's all. Uh -huh. He's looking over the head of the camera because all the people on the other side of it make him nervous. <laughs> um, so you know, part of it was just strictly financial. It's just like something's got to give, and I looked at my backlog and I looked at the game I wanted to play that I haven't gotten to, and I said, you know what, games could games could give games could. Games could, games could definitely hold off for a while and that they made that choice and then immediately after that we started getting all the freaking games that were going to be coming out and yeah. they were all going to be awesome you realized that 2017 was a bad year for this resolution <laughs> yeah yeah shortly after 2017 started i realized this was not the right year to do this um you know super it, it's 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 not easy, right? I mean, we do the podcast, we talk about games, we, we, we live in a, a place where, uh, you know, if you're online at all and into any of this stuff, you know, it's it's here in a flash and gone. You know, the, you know, the, the, the whole, people are barely talking about Horizon or Resident Evil anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's only been a couple of months since those came out and the discussion and the, the thought process on that is all gone. Now, I have no problem with that because I'm me, and that's fine. I'm playing The Witcher 3. I have basically no one to talk to about it. 
that's fine. I, I'm just internalizing it. I'm appreciating it myself. I'm correlating it to the things that I remember hearing and reading when it came out and going, yeah, okay, I see, you know, um, I can appreciate it in and of itself. And I think that partially just comes to the way I grew up playing games. Um, it was mostly just myself sitting in my room playing on the Nintendo playing on the computer I wasn't ever into the whole multiplayer thing and almost no one at school or anyone was playing the same games I was at the same time I was so I was always out of sync um, now it's not easy and there have been you know times where the kids have been like you know hey we should get this game because you know it's really super cool and there's stuff going on and blah 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 and you're like yeah do you have you know do you have 50, 60 bucks to, to, to throw toward this? No. Well, then, you know, we're just SOL. Um, the other thing is, I bought Dragon Age Inquisition on launch day. Haven't ever played it. I got uh, Witcher 3 partially as a gift, and I, I bought the or the game, the base game as a gift, and I went ahead and bought the season pass on top of that because I got it as a gift. I'm just playing it now. Um... And I'm looking at that going, you know, these games are like 20, 30 bucks now. You know, so if I wasn't going to get around to playing it till now, why did I buy it back then? Well, you know, I'm, I'm just like anyone else. I can get tied up into hype. I can get tied up into, you know, thinking, hey, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And, you know, then life happens. Um, you know, I, I, there's just a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of competition for, for money. There's a lot of competition for time. Uh, between work and family and, and uh, other entertainment options. Uh, you know, if I could lock in saying games are my thing, I'm just going to do games. I'm not going to go to movies. I'm not going to watch TV. I'm not going to buy comic books. I could wholly, completely support a gaming habit uh, as, as would typically be said. My jack of all master of none mentality though, does not, does not uh, accept that as a viable option. So, so, uh, so I want to make sure that everybody on the panel heard this. Our goal is to get Matt to give up everything other than video games. <laughs> that was not the implication. Um, <laughs> oh, it was quite there, clear, sir. Quite clear. No, I was just saying that, that that's, that's the decision this, process I had to go this through. It is but. clearly a cry for help. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Anybody that wants to send me money or free games, I'm all for that. <laughs> A lot sort it down um but how many drinks like, has dave had he's like oh mortgage feeding kids priority <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> college uh, right? uh, but you know does, does he just do this, the kate plan and not have either of those things <laughs> <laughs> yes have no, no that, that, that... in your life whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean that it's I'm 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 wondering I'm to that point now where I've got a, a senior who's graduating next year my other two will both be in high school which means within 4 years theoretically I will have kids primarily not at home anymore. No, um that, that, you'll have one kid that's still living with you for your entire his entire his, his entire life or her. Yeah, that's why I said theoretically, but that's just um, the way things are you'll have one kid that will not be. Yeah. But the uh, I mean, so wait, the how did you know? How did you know I was moving in with Matt? <laughs> I know from experience, I still live at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the one that claimed she was always going to live at home forever has now decided that she will move at least a couple blocks away, live at least a couple blocks away. She turned so, into a teenager, uh, she realized, ew, no parents, yuck. <laughs> Something like that. Um, this is my daughter's birthday today too, so happy birthday! Oh, happy birthday, Matt. happy birthday, daughter unit. Yes, fourteen, almost, almost done with eighth grade. Crazy. Um, yeah, and obviously so, has, hasn't entered the you know, teenager phase completely yet. Because what was her present? <laughs> her present from us was all five lions for the new Voltron. <laughs> She so, it. so you know what I I, I was so I was poo pooing those five lions. I went to Target the other day and I started looking at them, 
A, congratulations for finding all five of them because there were only three of them at the store that I was at. And I went to Toys R Us and they had the exact same three. So it was not like I could actually... Was red and black missing? Uh, no, black was there. It was green and blue that were missing for me. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I still think the the original one is is better personally. But well, it, it all depends on yeah what you like. I I was impressed with it that it it the lions actually look like the lions from the show and Voltron actually looks like Voltron from the show. I mean, yeah, usually no, you get does. one or the other. You know, one looks okay and the other one looks janky. They both look looks both really wow. It looks okay, really um, good in both forms. Question though, when your daughter put it together, did she scream and all form the head? <laughs> well, we, we we did it well we were, we actually did that a couple of times because we were trying to get Pidge's the green lion to go in the arm socket and it was not going in so we were uh, we, we, we mumbled around with all the old call phrases for a while there um, but the funny thing is is the the you the central unit the black lion talks it's electronic it actually knows and I haven't figured out exactly yet how which lions are attached and which ones aren't Russian hackers. Spawn. So <laughs> when when we when we snap the last leg in, the legs go come in and off really easy. The arms not so much. Um, it actually went through a a, a a a sound cycle of sound effects and uh, voice commands and stuff. It's not the old classic lines, um, and it's not the voice actors from the show, which is kind of disappointing yeah, that they didn't I actually use sound that. samples from the show. Um, but it does actually have all five characters then. So you have Pidge, Lance, Hunk, uh, uh, Shia, Keith, uh, Keith, Keith, and, uh, and yeah. uh, why Rupert. can't I think of his name? Rupert. Rupert, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, actually talking and, and uh, you know, they'll command, you know, he'll command one of them to do their attack or actually kick off their special ability or whatever. So it's actually pretty cool when it's together that the voice commands change and recognize that it's Voltron versus as his individual lions. Um, so yeah, that was actually really, really cool. Anyway, how do we get on this topic? Oh yeah, my daughter's birthday today. Yes, there we go. Um, but then, you know, this is also the girl who wears dresses 90% of the time. So phew, go figure. Um, she, she can, yeah. and she loves Agents of Shield. She loves uh, the fact that she loves Daisy and May and and, uh, and I can't think of her name Simmons. You know, she likes the the, the the fact that they've got the good female characters on there. Um, she loves Doctor Who. Not so sure about this new companion, but she was a real Clara fan. So yeah. Um, what did you do to that poor child, Matt? You I encouraged know. this. Clara I mean, fan I mean, business. It was just the age. I think it was just the age. You know, the time when it came on, you know. At least it's not Rose. Oh, yeah, I went there. Um, <laughs> so I'm terrified of that stuff. Like, I'm, I'm terrified of, like, you know, when Alex starts watching Star Wars, that he's going to be like, Dad, I need a Jar Jar figure. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and like, that's when you wash his mouth out with soap. Yeah, I'll be like, how dare you? That'll be the first time I hit him. You know, when you're young, I'm kidding. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. When you're young, and I remember when I was a 14 year old girl, I liked some dumb stuff. <laughs> it was just part of growing up. You like yeah, yeah. It's it's funny yeah. though how it, it it is funny though how young they actually start like picking out favorite stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like they have little personalities. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> It's funny though, they're much more deterministic on that stuff than I am. Yeah. They'll like say, What's your favorite? Do, 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 do. And they don't, I don't know. Things. Depends <laughs> yeah. on my mood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was really good, actually. Yeah, I set myself up for that. <laughs> But I mean, and the other adults, nine, we tend to be more nuanced, right? I mean, our 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 our, our tastes depend on more on our moods. And now he's trying to call himself nuanced instead nuanced. of just wishy washy. Oh. <laughs> no, nuanced is, is nuanced is the correct thing for that because he 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 treats like when you ask him like what his preferences are, he treats it like he's um, 
Uh, oh, oh God, what's those? What's what, what's those wine? He's got, no, he's treating wine it like expert. he's got his hand on nuclear code. Oh, no, no, no. What's... no. What it is is he's treating it like he's making the genie wish and wants to make sure that he doesn't say anything that's gonna screw up his wish. No, 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 no. What's the uh, what's the like the wine connoisseur that you the um... the sommelier? The sommelier, yeah. That's how he's treating the thing. It, where, where he's like, you know, okay, no, it's got to be the right thing for the right pairing, the right this. He's just, he takes it to like a, a, a crazy level. I used to do this with people, like um, a, a friend of mine would come over to my house and uh, he was like, he was kind of like, in, he was into gaming, but like, you know, his kids had the systems and he was just like, I don't know, I guess I, don't, I just want to play something. I know you got a lot of stuff. So I, so I brought him over to my house. I'm like, all right, here's the wall. I was like, what kind of a mood you in? And I, I started asking him questions. Like, I was oh God, almost I'm going... Gonna, oh, God. This is, feels like a day at work. Where it's like, I need something to read. What should I read? Yeah, but that's what I... <laughs> but what I would do is I would sit uh, there and I would... What do you like? I would just ask him basic questions. And it was kind of like a like a psych profile I was, you know, putting together real quick. And he would sit there and answer a couple questions. And I'd be like, ah, okay. You want this game. And then he would go home. And he would be like, man, you hit it right on the head. I'm like, I know, because I'm good at that. That's what Matt's trying to do when you ask him any question. Wait, how how do we how do we get this Dave back? Or uh, ever to ever on the show? My controller went dead. <laughs> that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant at all, but okay, yes, that too. That's why he's I, looking at the camera. Oh. Yes, that's why he's looking at the camera. I figured that out a while back. Uh, okay. I was asking, okay. how do we get that Dave yeah, like, on the Dave. show? Not the drunken Dave. <laughs> not the drunken Dave, who is no longer playing Injustice 2. How do we get the Dave that actually plays games and can recommend games to other people on the on the show? Yeah, that, that Dave had a lot more time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Dave didn't have a he didn't have a, a child depending on him for for love and affection and attention and to teach actually I'm guessing in another couple years the gameplay will be coming back because then he yeah that's what I was going to say you're going to play games more than ever because you'll have a partner except it'll just be Minecraft <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft will be dead by then. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> Minecraft will never die. No, you yeah. wish it will, but it It'll won't. Be Disney Channel level garbage video games. <laughs> that you have to pretend to like because you love your children. I don't know. See, here's the thing. I don't. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Yeah, probably. But you can also like. I'm, I'm planning on. I'm. I'm trying to guide him. Like you know, with like TV stuff. Like right now. Like he's not just. He doesn't just like you know we don't just pop him and you know turn the tv on and whatever's on yeah. he can watch you know it's like we have sesame street on demand so we watch a couple episodes of sesame street sesame street's fantastic and has only gotten better mm -hmm. and it's actually it's like, hilarious because you they... me of my friend drew he's got two girls they're way older than alex they're like 11 10, 12 and 10 but for the most part you know they like really cool stuff and you know quality stuff but as i was saying before when you're a kid no matter how cool you are like in terms of liking good stuff you're gonna like something that's complete garbage <laughs> oh my god cool. i mean dude i like stuff that's complete garbage i mean we all do it so yeah it's like no matter how much cool stuff he's alex is guaranteed gonna like something that you like have to scream into a pillow because it just kills your brain. Yeah, we're not just gonna be complaining, guys. Like I've completely failed as a father. You you're gonna buy way more licensed shovelware games than you ever thought you would. I'll, I'll be like his favorite Green Lantern is Guy Gardner. Where did I go? So yeah, I've kind of like let this organic discussion go his and favorite, not. His favorite Robin is Damian Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know something with the animated Damian Wayne? I don't know. That's not no, he, no, no. It'll be spoiler. Oh, still bad. It'll be spoiler. No, the animated but... one. I don't know. I'm liking it. I, I, uh, I don't. I don't hate it. I'm sorry. Oh, he's a tool. I hate so him so much. Horrible. 
Have you seen? Have you seen? I try hardy emo edge lord douche character. No, but have you seen the animated stuff that he's been in? I I have not. Like there's but, there's been a couple recent. Um, but I have read the books that they're based on, and the books he's not. I uh, I get I, I get I that. Say, I've read the books too, but the, I, I, the animated stuff's better. Say, in Injustice, this is not a spoiler. It's just one of those random like clash dialogues you can get. Wonder Woman says to Batman, she's like, Damien despises you, and he's like, you can have him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do have some zingers in those Clash dialogues. Oh, that man. such a Batman thing to say. <laughs> so, we're not going to get to the news tonight, so we'll talk about one or two pieces of news. The first one, um, did, did I know, Dave, you watched the uh discovery trailer matt did you get a chance to watch the discovery trailer i, I did not get a chance to know okay so um it, it started strong and then it the longer it went on the less interested i became i don't know why something about it didn't seem to grab me and it's exactly what you said in the chat dave now that we've seen seth mcfarland's ripoff fox show which is basically galaxy quest in tv format I'm like I'm actually all on board that I, I I'm like more excited for that than I am Star Trek Discovery yeah, simply because Galaxy Quest is a better Star Trek movie than half the Star Trek movies. <laughs> it's, true. Uh, it's it's true. I'm I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, I I think that you know plus the fact that it's only on CBS All Access, which I don't have, is going to mean it's doomed to begin with, anyways. So I had an argument with a friend of mine uh, about that. <laughs> Like, just before this started. Actually, as the cast was starting. And he was just like, no, a la carte's the way things are going. And I'm like, no, they're just setting you up to do the same exact thing that they have now, you know, with that. I was like, they need to consolidate so everybody makes money. And, you know, yeah. but it's just not going to happen. Yeah, not quickly, anyways. Um, Other quick you news. By you? Wow. Uh, yeah, there's one. Girl, there's, oh, I, I, I stocked up before. But there is one grocery store that's still You're carrying it. <laughs> yes, we fell into a time warp. It's <laughs> 1990. Um, Sugar uh, Ray is relevant again. <laughs> <laughs> but but only every morning. <laughs> only every morning. It's still the bad American pop with corn syrup. Uh, uh, you know something? Yeah, this one is. The more I learn about <laughs> Rap Rabbit, the more I am excited. Uh, the collab between uh, Parappa the Rapper and Guitaru Man creators are making a rap battle game where you hear uh, the other person rap and then you pick out uh, specific words out of their rap to then build your own response verse to and you can choose the mood of it by e either being angry or happy or funny or uh, something like that, and then it's a rhythm game in that it builds out the response first, and then you have to press the buttons for it. I am super... Mom spaghetti. That's right! <laughs> That's right. So yeah, I... I uh... Hitman is being... or, or uh, um, IO Interactive is being sold by Square Enix. The rumor is that uh, IO will retain the Hitman rights and that Season 2 will happen. I'm actually really surprised, but they must have set those ridiculous sales expectations on Hitman uh, like they do with other things. So, yeah. I hope they get bought. Did we, did, uh, we talk, did we touch on the gamification of driving last week? No. You had that after the cast. Yeah. Can we talk about that real quick? Sure. So I got a new car. It's the same make and model that I've bought the past two cars. Um, but the, You didn't hit a deer this time. No, no, there's no deer. It's um, hopefully that's not going to happen where I live now. Oh dear. But the uh, so they have a feature in it where like there's a little like light around your speedometer, and if you're driving not fuel efficiently, it's blue. Right. And then it goes kind of like teal, you know, when you're getting better, and then it's green when your car is running completely fuel efficiently. Yep. So. I know a lot of cars have done this. Um, mm -hmm. I used, my last car had like a little gauge, you know, that you would see, you know, where it's showing your miles per gallon. 
Um, but this one has it, like, you know, right there around the thing. You see it all the time. It's, like, you know, right in your face. And I'm not, like, a lead foot driver to begin with, you know, because it's just I've always had, like, you know, smaller cars and stuff. So I'm just not, you know, never gotten that mode. And I like to live. So I found myself really trying the game the miles per gallon in this car. So I've, when I... I've got, I... like... 2.4 miles beyond what they advertise as the upper limit. <laughs> Which I always thought they fudged those numbers by about 2.4 miles. So I'm doing so pretty good at this game. <laughs> when I when I bought my Prius, um, it has a display that you can change whatever it reads, but one of those is a gamification showing you when the electronic motor takes over and when the gas motor kicks in and so over time i learned that if i kept the needle under if i kept the graph as it was building up if i kept it under halfway the gas engine wouldn't kick in i am a lead foot i i tear away from every uh light like a bat out of hell i mean not dangerously but i go i go and and that's the point i found myself like accelerating at two miles an hour then three, then four, then five, just to keep it under the, so that the electric motor, because it would pad my gas mileage out. When I drove my Prius, I got 50 miles to the gallon. If I had driven it the way that they suggested all the time, I would have gotten 75 to the gallon. So I started playing that game specifically. I didn't to... know it was possible to get a Prius to only go 50 miles to the gallon. <laughs> Did I mention I'm a lead foot? I am a lead that, foot. That, so, that is... Well, yeah. Why? <laughs> they shouldn't let you have a Prius. Well, <laughs> I, I don't have one now, so there you go. When you when you get like that, you know, when you get the first checkup, they just like, you know, they look at the car, they read the computer, and they go, sir, give me the keys. So <laughs> the funny part is I, I have an electric scooter now that goes uh, up to 15 miles an hour, and it's got a range of like four, I, what do they say? I think uh, four to 12 miles per battery charge. Let me tell you, it's four miles. Because <laughs> I do not do less than 15 and I make it four miles and that that's it. So yeah, but. And we're walking. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Or, or pushing like a real scooter. Uh, that's gonna bring us to the part of the show where we thank our patrons. Every week, we uh, uh, go down the list of everybody who's uh, donating at the $5 or higher level. Thank them individually by name. So thank you, Regina. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Bobby. And thank you, uh, Justin. So thank you guys for your patronage. If you would like to donate, you can head over to patreon.com slash gamersledge, uh, where for as a little as a dollar a month, you can get your name on every show that we do. We'll do that at the very end of the podcast. Um, also make sure that you check out our, uh, you're most likely watching us on Twitch or YouTube. Uh, so thank you for that. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. If you've got comments or feedback, leave them and we'll be happy to, uh, respond or incorporate that into our next show. Also make sure you check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gamers ledge or Twitter dot com slash gamers ledge that's where our news feed goes which we're kind of ignoring this week because we ran out of time talking about stuff um e3 is coming up so we'll be taught we'll be making our e3 predictions on the sixth uh the week the weekend before e3 or the week before e3 we'll do our uh e3 prediction show talk about what we expect to see on each of the shows etc i have no idea what i'm gonna do for it well, that's this, why it's going to be interesting. This is, the first, this is the first year where I'm not actually going to call for the return of the Game Boy, so. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I don't think it's... I it'll actually... Be, it'll just I be the Game Boy Mini, and yeah. they'll remake it for a month. I, I, I just don't think there's a chance of it happening. Like, I, I don't even feel good about saying it this time. Well, you know what? We've got a couple minutes, and I do want to talk about a couple things. There was a really interesting um, conversation story that I put up on the newsfeed. Um, apparently, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 was stolen by hackers, and they're demanding a Bitcoin ransom from Disney, or they're going to release the movie online, which I do not agree with. I think that is bad business for everybody involved. But 
I couldn't help but making a yo dog meme out of it. Yo, I heard you like pirates, so we had pirates pirate your movie. But this is um, the most internet way. Of, this is the most piratey internet thing you could ever do. Like ransoming something for money. Yeah, <laughs> it's like totally pirate. It's like, oh, it's it's a piracy within piracy. And and they did. I mean, this was hot on the heels of the uh, Orange is the New Black. Yep episode that had the same thing happen and Netflix was like eh, whatever <laughs> yeah it's gonna get pirated within five minutes of us launching it anyway I can't so believe whatever. that Netflix didn't say okay it's released now yeah right I'm, yeah I'm surprising yeah like, I, for, I, for Netflix, I, I didn't understand why Netflix didn't just do that because it's Netflix like you're not they're not losing anything by releasing it early on their service so I, I didn't understand that one yeah um, I don't understand that one either and and I agree. I mean, it's going to be pirated anyway, so I, I figure Disney will just stick to its release date and count ticket sales to go up, and that'll be fine. But I just thought it was an interesting kind of meta thing. Uh, but actually, yeah. that stuff's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And I'm I'm curious as to just how bad it's going to get. Um, I just didn't think bitcoins were still a thing. Oh no, man, bitcoins. Still. Bitcoin's higher than it's ever been. Yeah. It's a huge thing. And it's um, also, it's very popular in that line of work because it's also harder to track and right. you know, they can, they can flip it for real money, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, it, it's very interesting being in my line of work now. E3 public passes sold out at $250 a piece. And no one still has any idea what you get for 250 bucks, other than to say, I went to E3. Which I get, but still. Days or just one day? Uh, 250 for all, all the days. That's not bad. But, for one day, that'd be ridiculous. But, they're, but you don't, they, they don't tell you like if you get anything. That doesn't get you into the, the conferences or anything like that. You, that. you know what you get for that 250 A lot of BO and sickness. Yes, you get all kinds of crud and just yeah, it's just crazy. Sweaty nerd nuts. I mean, you just know it's awful. You automatically grow a neck beard. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't uh, understand. Like you can sit at home and get all the information, and well, you can be comfortable and you get to play all the games on the floor. No, you get to stand in line for all the games on the floor yeah, and hope you get to play them. Yeah, you don't have time to play everything. Because that's going to be even worse now with these with so many more people descending upon it. Because E3's never been open to the public. This is the first year that they're doing this. And if they have an additional twenty to 30,000 people descend on the convention center on top of press, that's going to be a madhouse. I don't know. It'll be fun to watch. We're going to do so. You can watch just like this. Uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 is coming. Yes. Uh, I it's the first Lego Marvel one that launched God. with the PS4. <laughs> yeah, the Witcher TV series is coming. Was that was that the one that had the snakes joke in it from Samuel Jackson? Yes, yes, yes that, that is awesome. exactly the one. That, uh, was, that was my favorite joke in those games. A man is suing his date for texting on their first date during De Guardians of the Galaxy Two for his ticket what money the heck back. Did he take her to seventeen dollars? It was a seventeen dollar or fifty cent ticket. Dude, uh, I no, wish, I wish my tickets are twenty bucks. Well, yeah, but you go to the fancy eat pizza and garlic popcorn. No, place. no, 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 no. That's not that place. That place is more expensive. The one right by my house is twenty bucks. I, um, I looked at Alien Covenant, and whatever the theater it was in, um, the ticket price was um, it was over seventeen dollars. It was like seventeen eighty something. Yeah. I would never go to the movies. I would, I would literally never go to the movies. But then I felt, I don't know what the deal was with that one theater. Like, is it showing in 3D? It, it might be a 3D channel? IMAX. My guess is okay. you had an IMAX. Yeah, it must have been the IMAX one because then when I checked yeah. the other time slot, it was down to 13. Yeah. Which is still more than the most expensive movie slot here, but... Yeah, yeah. well, that's what, you, that's what happens when you live in the middle of, of America. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, so quick, quick poll survey across the room. 
Uh, do you think that... I don't want to ask if you think this guy is right. Because <laughs> the answer is, it's 17 freaking dollars. You shouldn't sue somebody for $17. But I would be pissed if somebody texts during the movie. Like that. Just tell her to stop. Uh, I would think so. Uh, also, Daniel said, uh, Jason Todd, come on, guys. <laughs> um, I, I, I think this is ridiculous. I mean, I get it. Yeah, it definitely would not be a second date. Um, obviously, you know, if you're going to sit there and text, <laughs> I'm not going to take you to a movie. But to, to, to sue, he, I mean, unless you can sue on legal Zoom for free, you're sinking so much money into just filing a lawsuit over $17.50. He's going to get that, laughed out of court. That's ridiculous. What? Well, no, what's what's the thing? He called her a threat to civilized society. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is hilarious. You know, actually. I don't get if he's like able to say that to her in a press release. Why couldn't he just say, hey, stop texting while right. they were at the movies? And if he felt that strongly about it, taking her phone away from her for a second or something. So she got the point. Yep. Do you know do you know what the, the beauty of this whole thing is? <laughs> What's that? Is this guy has now publicly <clears throat> ensured that he will never get another date again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. It is kind of hilarious. Gonna like, and then then he's gonna be like, Well we'll get it. Like, dude, you threaten to sue a date. No, not threatened. He did sue. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he did. See, so it's even part, better. The other part I don't get is why no one else in the theater or an usher didn't say anything because when someone's texting in a movie theater, it's obvious to more than just the person sitting beside them. Yeah, they definitely weren't on the East Coast. That's all I know. Her, her defense <laughs> was, yeah, I think it was in Texas or something, but her yeah. defense was she had her screen turned on all the way. So it's okay because she turned her screen down all the way. You know something? I will accept that because I've been in theaters where people don't do that. Oh. And I actually had a mini conversation with somebody because the dude actually went, who am I bothering? And I said, me and everyone around you. <laughs> and he was like, you can't even see my screen. I'm like, dude. Let me explain to you how rods and cones work in your eyes. <laughs> your peripheral vision picks up like... And I went into this. I did this. See, and the guy that's why I like Alamo. Because you do not have to do that. You simply put the card in the thing. The server comes by and they get ejected from the theater. And they can't come back. No refunds. Which is awesome. Which that kind of stuff's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen... I've, I've, for the most part, people have actually gotten better with it. I haven't seen it too much lately. Um, but man, some people were really bad with it before. And like when people called them out on it, they would sit there like this. One, I remember I was in this one theater and all of a sudden you hear this guy with a raspy voice and we just hear start, him start yelling it. It's my phone. It's my phone. And we turn around, we look and it is like a 65 year old grand, you know, grandfather with his grandchild yelling like he's going to fight someone. And like saying like let's go he goes we need to go outside for this and we're like he's like dude you're a grandfather like what's wrong with you why are you the one being rude here like it, it was insane where it's like canada and the u.s are very culturally different like, <laughs> i've never had that problem ever in a movie theater like if you say can you please shut your phone up they do it yeah that that's has anybody, the, wait a minute has anybody in canada ever had to tell someone to shut their phone yeah, off we do have jerks here we're human really? <laughs> but then they apologize for being a jerk yeah. because it's ingrained in us to be socially nice to each other <laughs> as opposed to like self-absorbed jerks well that's going to bring us to final thoughts where we can talk about <laughs> socially absorbed jerks or anything on our mind let's start all the way down at the far end with dave dave final thoughts for tonight final thoughts for tonight um i enjoyed some of the training in injustice too so far <laughs> Until um, your color ran out. and then <laughs> i also enjoyed playing the update my ps4 game again that was great when you don't turn it on for a month 
Uh, well, it technically was on and should have been getting updates, but I forgot to update the Wi-Fi password. The Wi-Fi setting. So, <laughs> oops. You did it again. Uh, Matt, final thoughts. Um. So my uh, comic store got shorted again. So no. Uh, oh, so Empire you missed issue two. Oh my god, dude, that's, that's sounds, horrible. That sounds like there's money in the budget for games this week. <laughs> a whole a whole three dollars and 99 cents i'll go buy me some angry birds um the uh but someone I, so, needs to call superman guy to get them to deliver it <laughs> <laughs> but uh i went it's so out of frustration i went ahead and, and looked at the spoilers just to see because the story is already crap so i don't really care and <laughs> yeah i i looked at it and i'm i'm shaking my head i i did i hope I hope that they seriously keep to their word about no events for a good, at least eight months because come on guys maybe that's what they're doing is they're, they're making know. everybody sick of them for a while hail hydra we've been sick of them for a long while <laughs> yeah yeah just, just like captain america events have been evil all along i think that's actually i think that's actually what the, that was what the final straw was which got what got me to the, the quick comics for a while was one of the events where it's just like yeah everything was a crossover you had to buy all these different books to like you know keep catch up on the story um god what, which one was it it was obviously one of the there's x so ones many, there's so many to choose from yeah, I mean, beyond you know, it's not just there's book events, there's title, you know, there, there's uh, character events, there's then there's the massive crossover event, you know. So there's so many events. It's there's never not an event of some sort going on. Right. Yeah, it was, it was uh, one of the big X Men ones. And and well, finally, I was just like, I'm out. That nar that narrows like it House down. of M or something. <clears throat> no, House uh, of M was a was a full. That was a full crossover. Yeah, a, that was a full crossover. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like they said, X one. I assumed it was. I didn't. Yeah, think I think it was. I think it was story, before. But... I think it was before House of N though, because it was like, like we're talking like college, extinct. Oh, oh like the uh, extinction um, event. Um, oh, my brain stopped working. I don't remember. Extinction what agenda. Extinction. Yeah, extinction, extinction agenda. Thank you. What was right after extinction agenda? Because I think I had that one. Uh. Testing you guys right now. I don't remember. It's late. I think it was. Was that executioners? Was that executioner song? Ex executioner's song. Yeah, that sounds right. Might have been after that one, because that sounds familiar too. Well, not long after that one would have been the reboot, I think. So uh, then that's you... what it was—the reboot, the the one big reboot where they just gave up. Yeah. The, yeah, that was the yeah. one where I was just like. Give up. <laughs> Kate, final thoughts? I'll bring this full circle. Because of Injustice 2, I bought my first graphic novels in a long, long time because I get 30% off the book. Nice. Was it the Injustice the Year 1? No, I got, um, I just wanted to read just some stuff. So I got uh, a couple Wonder Woman ones and uh, Batman Black Mirror. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Can I read Saga? No, but we have it at work. I could buy it. I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts on it are in particular. Uh, I've never read it, so I don't know. It, it's, it's, I mean, I love it. It's really good. Um, is it? it is sappy. Like, it's it's kind of like a love story at heart. Um, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a it's a but different it's a raunchy, dirty, violent love story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's back in. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like like at its heart, it's like you know about family and you know love and everything. But it's also there's a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, it's a lot of violence, a lot of death, a lot of no, we stuff. Do, we we do have it at work. It's worth checking out. I'm just curious because, like, story-wise, it's like it's one of the most well-written things I've ever read. Yeah, it's Vaughn, so I mean, it's 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 very very well written. And is it uh, who's the artist on that? It's uh, Fiona Staples. Yeah, Fiona. yeah, I think so. Yeah. So yeah, and she she's very distinctive art style. I wouldn't like it for every book, but it works remarkably well for yeah, this. Yeah, it's really good for this stuff. 
Well, then my final thought of the My day... is possessed. <laughs> that, that's not my final thought of the day. My final thought of the day is uh, Monday... Shop. I'm sorry, it just turned itself on and it says shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's listening. It's, it's, it, it, it knows your listening. optimal... It knows your optimal buy times. It expects you to be drunk by now. And then you won't even remember. Uh, th Dude, I would be very concerned the Russians are hacking you right now, Dave. Dude, this is seriously not cool. Yeah. Um, my final oh. thought for the day, besides uh, amusing Russian hacks, is that um, we are doing our first test for the Monday night game uh, this upcoming Monday. Looking forward to it. Got some stuff we're going to do from the tech side that should be fun, but then uh, I don't know exactly when it'll start. Probably one or two weeks after that, but that will be in the Monday night time slot from 7 to 11 Pacific time. Um, that we are doing a Shadowrun Anarchy oh, the tabletop, deck. tabletop RPG, and Anarchy is interesting because everyone is the GM. Um, there is no... There's no... Uh, classic like there we there is like a main GM uh, but then everyone takes turns narrating their own section of story and it always builds you can't tear down somebody else's stuff um, and so we, we've been uh, we're gonna be using for the test we're gonna be using uh, pre-made characters but then we may go into um, custom characters after that so that's that's interesting we'll have our first run through on on Monday and then we'll start those when everybody feels comfortable with the format and what's going on. Um, and then that's going to bring us to the end of the show where we uh, end our show with a piece of wisdom to get you through the week. Um, it says shop. <laughs> Why does it say that? That's it's, not a setting. It's S, it's S hop. It's, it's yeah. sub-Saharan hop music. Hey, Matt. No, that's not what it is. Matt. Did you yeah. know a friend of Did you know a friend of mine died recently after drinking a gallon of varnish? Well, that that sounds like it probably wouldn't work so well. It was a horrible end, but a lovely finish. <laughs> Until next week. Came on. With working I'm jokes. Ignoring you. I think my cell phone's <laughs> trying to kill me. <laughs> Dave soundbar is the terminator he, he, he actually seeded Skynet <laughs> from his soundbar I'm really concerned <laughs> this is like a really lame version of they live why is it just why did it just turn on and say shop why is it a... Okay. It's gonna be up at night, like... Like, I don't know, I guess I... know what to ask for Father's Day and my birthday. A shop. Well, the thing is... <laughs> the thing that sucks is, like, I can't...